hello i hope you can hear me and see me okay um i've got quite a number of things to show you today so i'm i'm not going to give you a bit of a rundown uh, of everything i'm just going to just crack on with it to try and keep the video a little bit shorter i've got rafe with me today i did put him in here before i pressed record but he was already complaining to come back out so i think he just wants a little bit of fuss so he's he might be on my lap i don't i don't know maybe maybe now he's had a bit of fuss he might get in there let's have a look. Ray, look what's down here. The treats. The treats. I think he's spotted them. Right. Um, I'm going to do an unboxing first. And um, I've ordered another box from Guthrie and Garney. And it's um, it's a, a sewing society that um, she releases a box every month. And you can choose whether you want it or not. And uh, which I think is a lovely idea. And I think if you or you get basically fabric, a pattern and the bits and bobs you need to make it. And if you've got that pattern already, you have got the option that you can change the pattern to another pattern by that same designer. And there is a choice of different fabrics and more than one kit. Now this month there was a skirt. I'm sorry, I can't remember what the skirt was called and the, and the name of the design designer but I can show you um, the one that I've got and the other one it's basically a dress but you can have it as a top as well now you're going to see the fabric first because I've already um, overlocked the edges the raw edges of the fabric and I've pre-washed it um, because I was that eager so uh, so it's out and it looks all a bit of a mess and it's this gorgeous leopard print uh, fabric um, let me see who it's by. I should I should always have this ready, shouldn't I? But I've wrote a list of things I want to show you. So I'm just trying to find find the salvage. Um, it is. I'm not very good at pronouncing things, aren't I? Am I? Uh, Radiance by Penelope Europe. That's what it says on the salvage. And hopefully, look, I I don't. I think I have wore this colour once before in a ready-made garment in a top and I think it uh, it was more of the thing that I wore in autumn but I'm, I am going to make the full, the, I'm going a bit out there actually, I'm going to make the, the actual full length dress and I don't really do long dresses so, uh, so that's the fabric, um, I'm not sure how much you get, there's a lot this box did cost me more than my the last one I had, but I think it's purely because the the amount of fabric that you get, and it, you get a box of this size, and in this month's box, the pattern I chose because it was a choice or two was the Wilder gown by the Friday Pattern Company, and I've only ever made one garment from the Friday Pattern Company, and uh, I'm going to be showing you that today because you haven't seen that yet and it's this dress and I am going to make the dress version so I don't normally wear things like that but it's quite uh, loose fitting and long and it's not something I wear so it's, it might be a bit of a disaster for my show I I probably what you'd call um an hourglass my waist is a lot smaller than my hips and bust so when you're an hourglass you should really you're advised to steer away from this kind of look but do you know what I'm gonna give it a go and um, and I'll let you know how I get on with that I don't know if I'll have brought that um, it will be ready by my next video I'm not sure but it will be in an up and coming video. Um, I've got a make to measure card and that's where you put all your measurements on. And I've got a little box, a little box, a little bag here. And you get the needles that you'll need, which that's nice. And, and actually, uh, I've really liked getting these needles for these lightweight fabrics because I seem to have a lot of needles for heavier weight things and I, I like I seem to have in the last two boxes, at least I've stocked up now on some lighter weight fabric needles and, and I've got the coordinating thread so I'm really looking forward to making that. Um, it might not be for me, it might just look 
oversized, it might drown me, but I'm going to try and get it as loo fitted, but loose fitting enough to go over me, and, I and I'll just see how I get on, so, uh, like, I, I was going to do all, like, French seams and things, but I don't know if it's just better just to go, um, just to crack on and just make it and see, and leave it, so I can see if I can make adjustments, like, I know making a toile would be the best option for me, but, um, I haven't got a, of like a twelve fabric that's quite as drapey and I don't know if you'd get the same effect and I don't know if it will put me off so I've, I've looked at the measurement sizes on it and I think even if I make the extra small I think that's I, I think I'll still get in that I think looking at the ease um, of the garment the the ease on the bust um, is quite a few inches bigger than mine and, uh, and on, on all the other measurements so I think I could just go in and make that and then I'll, and I'll just go from there so that's quite exciting so that's the Guthrie and Garney unboxing I've got for this month so I will cross that out um, I forgot to mention uh, last time when I recorded and I'd already posted this um, picture on social media um, I have learnt now how to put pictures into my videos so uh, maybe there might be a picture, picture come up here now but uh, or I might decide to put it on my blog so if it's not here uh, well if it is here I'll still put it on my blog but um, if it isn't just have a look at my blog in the description box after you finish watching this video so I'm it might be here I don't know yet so uh, so the Oh, that's what I wanted to say. Oh, it was about. I want to tell you about the wardrobe, haven't I? Basically, I posted a picture uh, of the inside of my wardrobe. Now it's it's only one part of my wardrobe. I've got four parts, but um, I've got so many homemade garments now. I've decided to give it a dedicated section. So this one section, it is all my homemade things, whether they're sewn, knitted or crochet. When I took the photograph, not absolutely every uh, knitted or sewn garment was in there. Things that I've just, I've got to sort out because I've got, I've got things that are under the stairs and all sorts. But it managed to fill it. It was quite a nice photo. And I was really quite proud. I couldn't believe how many... Uh, things I've actually made now so I know I, I've been sewing um you know it's one of those things like you know I've sewn you know a little bit all my life but I've really been sewing like a crazy woman since 2012 but I wasn't heavily into uh, garment making and I was only kind of making one to two garments a year and they weren't always for myself but um last year I made four garments and I think when I can when I last counted I'd made 14 this year but I I don't know if that's changed now. I can't remember when I counted. So I think I've definitely caught the dressmaking bug. So uh, so I'll, no doubt I'm going to have to start probably emptying some of my ready-made garments, you know, shop-bought garments for more me-made things in the future because they get. I think they're going to expand. I'm getting. A, I'm not saying I'd never buy a shop-bought garment, but I, I haven't for a while and. Uh, and I'm getting more enjoyment out of making my own clothes. So that's a little bit of dressmaking for now. We're going to go back to dressmaking, but we're just going to step away from it for one moment. Now, in my last video, you will have seen I made the Mandy Shaw Brighton Beach Bag and how ridiculously big it turned out to be. But I'm going to be able to get everything in that. Well, in the, in the pattern, did I leave the, I don't, I think, oh, well, I have left the pattern out. And here's the, here's the pattern. I showed you that last time. Inside the pattern um, and, and the list, it tells you you're going to do the, need a 10 inch zip. But when you make the bag, you don't use a zip. And I thought, well, where does the zip come in this 10 inch zip? But inside it, there's some extra uh, instructions telling you how to make a purse that you basically clip inside the bag because when you make the bag you put a d-ring in and then I realized that this little purse thing is to basically clip to that so basically I told you I was going to make it because there's no picture 
and then I'll show you what it looks like. However, it's kind of up to you how it's going to turn out because basically the, the zip is 10 inches and it tells you to cut your leftover fabric um, 12 inches, so obviously it's longer than the zip, with, uh, by whatever uh, you've got length what you've got left in that stripy fabric however I must have overbought the fabric because I didn't buy this as a kit I bought it as a pattern and I bought the fabric separately so my purse would have been ridiculously long so I thought I'm just going to use my discretion so initially I cut it out 12 by 12 and then I thought no so I ended up lopping that in half so I'd got two stripy pieces that were 12 by 6 and basically you sew fabric on the ends of the of the each zip or each end of the zip then you sew your fabric um either side of the zip and basically what mandy wants you to do is sew it down the three sides so basically you'd have a rectangle shaped thing with a zip on it however i did something a little bit different when i uh, attached the um the zip to the two pieces of fabric that were 12 inches by six inches both of them i decided to just sew the bottom edge so if you imagine it's on a flat with a zip in the middle those two ends on the side right sides together i sewed those together then i matched that seam up with the zip so that it's lying on top of it then I sew the. T I'm sorry if this doesn't make sense. I, sew, I if you ever want a future uh, tutorial to show you how to make this, maybe I'll bring it. But I sewed the two ends. So I'd got a flat piece like what Mandy would suggest, but Mandy's zip was on the top and then the seam on the bottom. Mine was flat with the zip down the middle. So if you imagine a rectangle like that, mine would look like that with the zip down here not on the end and then basically i box the corners um and it's as simple as that really it might not sound simple but it is really simple and i would like to bring a tutorial to show you how to make this i am um, i've made loads of these shape um things in the past i've made loads for my children for myself some i've lined some i haven't so this isn't lined uh because it because of the kind of fabric i've used but this is it this is what i've made it's a box sh uh, shaped pouch and that's what it looks like on the inside because it's that uh, outdoor fabric um i didn't need to line it and it makes it all sort of waterproof and um, and that is all clipped in. Unfortunately, the um, the D ring that I had wasn't as fancy as the lovely clasp I used in the bag. But there you go. That that now pops in there, and it keeps that nice and safe. And you can keep bits and bobs. And what I thought is really good. So I don't know if you've ever been to an English seaside where the seagulls are quite cheeky. Um, because I have, um, I've been going to the English seaside uh, um, very regular since marrying my husband, or well, since we had our first baby and being married, and uh, I've kind of got to learn how to not have food taken off me by seagulls, so I thought, but actually the last time I went, uh, a seagull was very cheeky and took my Cornish pasty out of my bag when I was sitting on the beach. I, I saw this seagull look looking at me and I was thinking yes okay cheeky little thing sitting there like I, I love them I'm not I don't like I dislike them or anything apart from if you're in a cottage that it's where they all seem to roost and you wake they wake you up and they're squawking all night I didn't particularly like them that much that holiday but generally most of the time I like them but this seagull just kept looking at me I thought what was it looking at I've not got any food on me anyway next thing I know it had took a paper bag with a pasty in out of my bag and was off with it I was like cheeky monkey so even your bag isn't safe so maybe what I should have done 
is made. I could have get. I probably could get a pasty in that. Just the boat. Maybe the mini pasties. Make one big enough to put your pasty in it. That's probably the best idea. So that is that. Excuse me. I'm gonna just have, need to have a little drink, right? I talk so much. I make myself dry. I did this in the garden yesterday, actually, because my next door neighbours has got. I've got chickens now. And uh, so we like, we've got this real thing in common where we talk about the chickens now. So we was out there ages just for chicken talk. So, and I was exactly the same. I thought, oh, I can't wait to go and get a drink because I'm absolutely dying. Next time I think I see my neighbour, I might take a drink out with me. So that is the, that is that, right. Bird fabric, right. Um, now somebody, now well done to her, somebody um, has started selling fabric as a business. She's in North Wales and she's called Eliza Fabrics. Now fair play to her, I would not have known anything about her, but she messaged me, private messaged me on my craft Facebook page to tell me that she'd started this business. She started up a Facebook group, she started an Instagram account, she started, she started Started following my Facebook page, following my Instagram page, and she's often liking and commented on my photos. Now, what? And actually, I know this. She's probably she does this because she just she likes doing this. But actually, it's good business sense because I remember her. So I've gone looking on the fabrics and I've bought some fabric. And um, and I've wanted fabric like this for some time. I really love navy blue, and I love things with navy with white. And this has got swifts on it, and I plan to make a dress with it. Now my plan to start with was to make uh, a dress I've made before that I've showed you. I made a pineapple. Uh, fabric dress with it and it's the Christine Haynes Sylvie dress um, it, I might, maybe I'll put a photograph here I don't know May, maybe you might start seeing some little photographs pop up and I've not even mentioned it uh, but I'm not entirely sure yet if I do make this again I would be lowering the back lower than the pineapple one I'd probably make some odd adjustments then I thought, well, I did buy this fabric about a month or two ago, this fabric, this pattern, and it's the Tara button back dress. Um, it's a 60s inspired and it's a simple sew and it's a button back. So that is a make that I'd really like to make. So that was another option, but I'm still not entirely sure yet what I'm going to make with it, but watch this space. So I think I'm going to make this one uh, before I make my Guthrie and Garni, um, because I think with my Guthrie and Garni, I'm not saying I'm gonna make, wait till autumn, but I could kind of make wear that in, mild autumn but i think this is more spring summer summertime isn't it kind of fabric so i think i need to get that made done so that is what's going on with those uh, that is a cotton poplin and the fabric is sorry for the mess of it again i've washed this one and dried it i think i remember who it is but i don't want to say it's Rose and Hubble Fabrics, and I know I've sewn with Rose and Hubble Fabrics before. I don't know if it's been with garments, but I've definitely, I definitely recognise it. So that is that. Now, my next make, now I'm really hoping I can get a picture coming up. I think it comes up this side. And then um, when I, in my last video, I showed you some stripy fabric. It's this fabric and I made a cocoa dress, my first ever cocoa dress, and I really hope to get the square neck top by the Friday Pattern Company. So I did manage to get a top out of it, uh, that pattern, and hopefully, uh, if I'm doing things right, you're seeing it on the screen, or you've seen it on the screen, and, uh, and it's really delightful. The only, you probably can't really tell from the photograph, but I think if I was to make it again, I would make it a bit smaller. I was hoping to wear it. Now, this is it. That's the back and, um, and this is the front. But I think it 
it could have done with being a size smaller um if i was to make it again i think i probably would make it one size smaller but it would all depend on the kind of knit and how stretchy it is uh, i'm really delighted with it, that, that top i did shorten it about two inches because i wanted it to sit uh, right where my jeans finish um because that's where i like it to be so it isn't that short if you're wondering normally but that i've shortened it i was hoping to be wearing it in this video i did have it on but um it's 15 degrees today outside it's morning it's monday morning while i'm filming this so you'll be seeing this later today well if you're in the states or somewhere by the time i get it up it probably is morning where you are but it's morning in the uk while i'm filming and it'll probably be afternoon by the time it's uploaded but um it's really quite cold in this room so um i have put the little heater on and i did go and put a long sleeve on which i'll talk about this actually because you've never seen this on and um and a cardigan that you have seen before if you've been watching my videos while well, that i made it's a crow a crochet cardigan um i found the pattern uh in uh, molly makes magazine and um but the designer is iron lamb i can't remember what issue um you stand, can still get it out the magazine but i can't remember what issue but it is in one of my old videos if I, if you um really want to know i probably could find out if you wanted to message me i could probably find that information out if you wanted to know what issue it's in because you can get them digitally even if you can't get the print one anymore so uh that's the square neck top and and what i wanted to get out of it as well that i mentioned in my last video i haven't got the have i got the pattern to hand no i wanted to get some pants out of it um the megan nielsen pants the uh, acacia pants and i I have managed to cut some pants out I haven't sewn them because I just haven't got any elastic I have got some elastic but I haven't got the right thickness or the right amount of length um, I queued up at Hobbycraft um, in a long it was a short queue but it took me a long time to get in because of the social distancing got in there eventually and they had really really skinny elastic and really wide elastic nothing suitable so i've ended up ordering online and i'm waiting for it basically so i haven't been able to make my pants but actually i've still got a bit of that fabric left i don't know how much of what i'd be able to get out of it again i don't know maybe i could make another square neck top in the smaller size and see how i like that but then i'm going to have two tops the same so i don't know maybe i'll just keep it in my stash and see what happens so that is the square neck top that is the and actually i told you that it's the craft cotton com uh, company knit fabric but uh, organic knit but um i forgot to mention and i forgot this myself actually it's tilly and the buttons fabric so actually it was perfectly right really well making the cocoa wasn't it so that's lovely so uh i've put transformation garments now hopefully if all goes to well a photograph of what this garment used to look like is going to come up on the screen so hopefully over here but i had a garment that my husband uh, did i mention this last time i don't know maybe i did maybe did i show you i can't remember i basically um bought a a short version play suit from River Island from a holiday last year and I didn't end up wearing it on holiday I can't even remember why but my husband looked at it when I bought it said it's fine but then when I went to wear it this summer when it was really hot he said you're not going to wear that are you and he didn't like it and whatever so yes I did I did mention this I remember now so when I last saw you I told you that I'd picked it all to pieces and I'd basically I'd cut the short bit off in one hole well not cut it off i picked it off and i basically folded over a hem and i used the elastic that was originally around the bust area on the shorts so i had a little pair of shorts but i still had all these pieces so it was a play suit that was a boob tube um shorts version with a flounce and it had like a little wrap skirt over it but i picked it all to pieces so what I decided to do next, um, I decided to put elastic back into the top 
Um, and I, the only elastic that I had that was long enough was some Pico knicker elastic. Do you know the um, a knicker elastic with a little frilly edge? So uh, I popped that in. It was a little bit loose. Um, so I have posted a photograph on the social media. Maybe there's picture, going to be a picture here. I don't know. So what I did initially, I put some elastic back in and then I attached the flank which was a little bit bigger than the garment itself so I had to kind of ease it in and attached it to the bottom anyway I tried it on and with the shorts and you know what I absolutely loved it and initially I left it at that but since then um, I haven't I have took photos but I haven't posted them I've added some straps so basically I put on like a white bra that I wear the most um, I made some straps out of the wrap skirt and I got some wonder clips if you don't know what wonder clips are they're these things these clips these plastic clips you use when you put on your binding on quilts and uh, got the husband to basically clip the straps to to cover my bra at the back with it on and then I basically just to keep it in place to really secure because it could pop out with those clips I got a micro stitch gun you could have put a pin but a micro stitch gun just to make it sure it was secure then I cut them a bit took the end in and sewed it in and then then it was really easy for me to put the straps around the front and see where I wanted it so since the photograph I posted on social media I have added the straps to it these little straps so that is what the top I've made out of it and even though it's quite loose but it looks really nice with the little shorts it does look nice I don't know if it together if it looks a bit pajamery. what I'm gonna do um, if the photos aren't on here I will put a photograph in my blog um, and I'd really appreciate if you'd give me a comment do you think I could wear it out the house or do you think it looks a bit night weary so uh, I'd like an, another woman's opinions I'll mention that again at the end if I remember because sometimes if you ask a question too soon on in the video people don't remember so I'll try to remember that so I'll, I'll pop that there um, so uh, before I'm gonna take this cardigan off now because I'm getting a little warm but I'm just gonna show it you on and from the back it's quite what I liked about it it's quite a loose loose fitting um like a drop shoulder kind of look and I really like that and I really like the bubble see they're in heart shape so I really like that and actually um the top I've got on is really old I have made it it's Satillion the buttons Agnes top I think I might have showed it you on a hanger um, it has faded a lot because I've worn it so much but you'll notice the neck is really high I wanted the high neck on this one but I, I couldn't find my Agnes top pattern so I ended up buying another one but I've found my other one now so which is great because I'll, um, I've got one where I've made the neck higher so if I want a high neck one uh, I'll have a high neck one and, and the next one I'm going to make I'm actually going to make it as it should and I think I made this even longer do you know if you've got the paper pattern I use right to the bottom of the pattern to make this and mine is really really long so next time I'm going to make it with the correct neck um, the correct length the only thing I might do I might do the three the, uh, the uh, three quarter sleeves but I might make them like a bit more like the cocoa length and put them below the elbow because um, I can always shorten them so uh, yes I've put this on because it's like really cosy and uh, even though it's faded and everything and actually when I met I've actually have improved taking photographs sometimes I'd have a photograph taken and, the, and I'd stand in the most awkward places I think when I had this photographed I was standing in front, an awkward angle in front of my bird cage, and uh, and it just it just looks awful. So uh, I've never had a nice photograph in this now. Um, so, but you you know, you've seen me wearing it kind of thing. So that's that. So that's my transformation. Something I wasn't going to mention. It's just because I've ended up putting it on. Right, the partridge in a pear tree. 
I was gonna make sure you could see these actually. I've put a tree here. Um let me see if I can try and dangle them so you so they dangle in the shot. There we go. I don't know how that looks. I'll have to I'll have to dodge won't I like this. Uh, if you want it, so basically you you've seen the pair. Let me try and put this on. You've seen the pair. And now I've made the partridge. It does, it is two sided. It does look a little bit, I think that's the side I did first, and then that's the side I did second. And I did the V's a little bit bigger on that side. So, um, so yeah, and, uh, and that's the pair. And on the back, the pair looks like that. So, um, those are the first two. You do um, one for each verse of the song, and then I think he wants to come out. And, uh, and it's the 12 days of Christmas. And actually, I've looked up the music, how to play it on the ukulele. And I'll say, I did learn it, but if I, ha if I had to go, I wouldn't know it. If, if you give me the ukulele now, I'd probably have to read the music again. So uh, even though I know all the words of the song, and I, was le and I had the music, trying to sing it and play it at the same time proved quite difficult, actually. But... I'm going to attempt on my Instagram and it will post to my Facebook. Uh, I'm going to do it in verses when it's getting close to Christmas. I'm going to attempt singing it to you. Now, I, I don't claim to be any kind of singer. I'm just the, I'm the sort of person that enjoys singing but can't sing. So... So it's not going to be great singing and I'm not even great at playing the ukulele either so I'm not even going to promise that's going to be good but I am going to attempt, it's a challenge for myself to do each verse for you uh, in blocks so obviously as it goes on it gets harder and harder because the verse gets longer so so lucky you <laughs> you're going to get that you can always um have it on you know scroll along if you see it on instagram and that maybe if i get it all if i do each verse maybe then i'll put it as a movie and then post it on youtube and give you all a laugh so i don't know hopefully this is going to happen so and um and i'm going to continue doing my my basically all my little hand stitching things so that's the partridge um basically um i showed you this last time it's mandy shaw and this is the project i got this month and it's to make a bag with a red red stitchery on it now how far have i got i've cut out the fabric i need for the red work I've put the transfer design on, I've not stitched it, I've put the design on, I've put interfacing on it and I've zigzagged the edges just to secure the edges and it's tucked away my box ready to stitch and that's as far as I've got so far with that. So that will be coming. Now you might have seen this, if you follow me on social media you might have seen this yesterday and I've made another Thimblewood project. Now you've seen a couple before. I I don't know if you can see yeah oh actually look have you seen it look i've tied it up a little bit do you remember there was a load of like magazines have a look at my last one actually there was a load of magazines here and a load of rubbish um basically i've put a load of fat quarters here and this is the dog this is my thimble wood make i've made before the dog i've got him there and um, in this one, it, I'm not saying it looks particularly exciting, but it's got a couple of bolts of fabric I don't, uh, that I bought when sewing quarter was closing down. I just thought they'd be really good for like quilt backings and things. And I've got a basket of patterns and then more things to do with dogs because I'm mad for the dogs, aren't I? Somebody just pop their head in then. So that's where I keep all my dog related patterns there. And uh, so, oh yes, yeah, so you'll have seen this yesterday. So, um, I've, so I've made that by Thimblewood before. You'll have seen my mouse before that I keep um, some hand sewing needles by my machine. And you keep your your needles in there so that's that so I've now made a third item and it's this it's the 
bow. I am so happy with this. I hope that you can see it okay. I'll pop that on there. Basically, it's um, it, it's on a wooden block. It's quite bright. It's on a wooden block. So, it's all manner of things have gone into this. I've had to hammer a nail into the block to attach this. And actually, I used a nail of my own, but it actually did come with a nail. And actually, if I'd used the nail that had come with it, it probably would have been easier because it was shorter. And I've used a long one. So when my husband was watching football yesterday, I was hammering away. And he, I, I think it fills him with dread when he hears the hammer because he thinks, what's she hammering now? But it's just so you can dangle this fish. And uh, and then basically, you, your boat is just attached. There's a hole that's been bored into the wood already for you. And it's already painted the black with the blue. And you had a choice of two colours, but I've used some of my own fabrics. This fabric with the, the boats on it was my own. Um, I didn't like the uh, design of it. Well, I'm not saying I didn't like it. That was the design, this... I don't think, know if you can see it, but it's basically a thin stripe fabric. Um, I thought that this would look better, so I've used this. And I've done it differently. In the pattern, you're supposed to leave the diagonal edge raw and you just fold over the two straight edges by one eighth of an inch. Now, I thought to myself that one eighth of an inch um, seemed a bit small to fold over, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, so I've de I decided, I've just realised I've got a shadow on my face by those things. It's given me black eyes. I thought, I thought I've got black eyes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I've basically cut out two triangles um, you know, right sides facing, and I've sewn all the way around and left a turning gap, um, and that's how I've done mine. Um, this England flag here, that was my own fabric as well that I decided to use. Um, what else did I decide to do? Did I do anything else differently to the pattern? don't think so. The only thing I had to do is I had to use my own rick rack. Now the rick rack was very similar that came in it, but it told you to glue it. But the glue, I was, so basically there's a lot of sticking and gluing. You basically, you, you, your boat, right, is in two pieces. It's like that and then another piece for the I'll just show you see it's very shaped inside it's quite clever isn't it basically it's two flat pieces and you cut that out in palmic violin and you cover it with fabric but basically you stick the fabric so if you're not a fan of gluing if you're not a gluing fan then I would, this isn't for you so I was just using regular glue that's my son's out of his school bag so I, glue, I was using that kind of glue to glue the fabric to the palmet vine and you have to cut a little edge and fold it over. But then uh, I thought, oh no, I'll use a wet glue, I think, I think it, because this isn't like for fabric, I thought I'd use a wet fabric glue for putting the rip rack on, but it was seeping through it and it didn't look good, so I ended up machine sewing the... Um, the rick rack just down the center on it that was the only machine sewing and this that i machine sewed um the sail was the only machine sewing i did on the whole project basically it was a lot of gluing and sticking and then and hand sewing so if you don't like glue and you don't like hand sewing then this isn't for you basically because when you've glued all your pieces on I let it dry, so it goes on a while because I kept on like leaving it overnight to dry and things. Um, you then hand stitch it, you whip it, whip stitch it all together, kind of thing, and have to try and get it all fitting. So I thoroughly enjoyed it because I do like gluing, um, even though I wasn't expecting it. I do like gluing because I'm a paper craft so I like that kind of thing uh, so I did end up using like three kinds of glue I use a f wet fabric glue a regular prick stick kind of glue but it's not prick stick it's another kind of brand just a stick glue and I did end up using a hot glue gun um, I actually hot
hot glue gun this on at the end and I hot glued this on at the end as well um, and I think that's the only hot gluing I did um, I suppose you could even glue these in if you wanted to as well um, at the end so uh, yeah and you use a bit of bond web and yeah so I really enjoyed that um, I understand it, it depends on what kind of thing you like doing if you're really into machine sewing it's not for you but some people aren't into machine sewing they prefer hand sewing so if you like gluing and hand sewing then yeah this is definitely one for you I thoroughly enjoyed it um, I'm trying to think will I do something I probably would make this the um, the life ring a bit different if I was to do it again I probably do think a bit different with that but other than that yes I th you know it was really good I'll show you the box that it came in it did come with a little bit of toy filling a tiny amount that much and i don't know what it's for i don't know whether you were meant to put in it inside the fish but it really it didn't really need it in all honesty but that's what the box looked like and on there the um the fabric used on there looks quite a, it doesn't look like it on there but quite a bold red stripe but mine didn't it looked a bit of a wishy-washy color and actually the one in the booklet when you're sewing it it was like a blue one with stars and mine wasn't that so uh, i'm quite happy with that so now that is displayed in the hall and um on top of a shelving thing we've got and i'm going to be making something else nautical that i haven't told you about and um and that will be coming hopefully on the next video because i've started cutting pattern pieces out for that so yes yeah, so that is it i think that is everything so um things i would like you to message me on is if you if i ha if you haven't seen it on here because i didn't show you have a look in my blog i'll put it in my blog i'll ask the question on there as well do you think it's something i could wear out it'd be on a hot day could i wear it out but does it look a bit too pajamary a, a lady's opinion i haven't asked the husband um and some moth advice i know it's moth season but um and i have ordered some moth sachets but I really need some advice because I feel like, uh, like I know what a real moth problem looks like because we actually stayed in a cottage in Cornwall and it was it was just awful. I've never seen so much many moths in all my life and I just thought you know you go on a holiday and you've had a few you've got a few new things I was thinking oh my goodness we're gonna have holes in everything because they're gonna lay their larvae and they're gonna eat away but obviously because I'm um you know a fabric Order, could I say? Um, oh, I really could do with some really good advice. So, advice on moths, please. Uh, on a tackling it when you're a sewer, especially, and or your knit jumpers, and uh, and what you think whether I can wear that out, that transformation out. I'd really appreciate it. So, thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry again for the length of my videos. I really try and hurry them along, but I'm. I just really, I just can't do it. I try my best. Maybe me trying my best is better because if I didn't try it, it'd be even longer. So thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll hopefully see you soon with some more makes. Bye.